Hello everybody, I'm Jabby Koei. I've got a lens for you guys today, the Rokinon 14mm f2.8 RF mount. I also got the Samyang Autofocus f2.8 18mm. This one's for the Sony mount, this is for the Canon RF mount. I'm trying to find the best vlogging lens I can get my hands on. This one comes in at 1.15 pounds according to specs, this one comes in at 0.3 pounds. Why did I get this for Canon instead of the Sony? Reviews on the Sony side weren't as good as on the Canon side for whatever reason. This is also newer, so that might make more sense. I don't know, maybe they did something to update the lens so that it has better focus performance. What are my needs with a vlogging lens? It's got to be wide angle and it's got to have autofocus and the autofocus has to be quiet. 14 millimeter f2.8 RF mount. Let's open this thing up. Ooh, got a nice little baggie to go with it. That is a pretty lens actually, I'm impressed. The hood mount does not come off. This is a pretty lens, actually. I like the look of it. Sometimes you associate weight with quality. In this particular instance, it's just enough weight that it feels like quality. It's got an autofocus switch here and your focus ring, which feels nice. I think it's fly-by-wire. This is very similar to the 12 to 24 that Sony makes. The hood doesn't remove on that lens and you have a cap just like this. I'm gonna give this doohickey a shot and see how the autofocus performance is and if we can hear it. Canon R5 weighs about 1.6 pounds. If you're curious, the Canon R6 weighs 1.5 pounds. And this lens, like I said a moment ago, weighs 1.1 pounds. Okay, that's not too bad. If you're trying to vlog with this, it's not too bad. I am rolling on the Canon R5 with the 14 millimeter. By the way, Rokinon and Samyang are basically the same company. They just have different names. And uh, this looks really nice so far. It's, it seems to be tracking me all right. Like it's locked on my eye really, really well. I'm actually impressed by this. Get really close. See my first like, pop pimple. This is cool. Uh, we're at F4 right now. Let me open this up all the way to 2.8. This is tracking me really well, guys. The weight is somewhat noticeable, but this is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And if I take this microphone off the top of it and just depend on my love, then it's even better. Obviously, you're not gonna use it like this. You'd probably be using it on one of these things right here. I'm actually digging this thing. I was trying to decide what between these two lenses, but even if this lens ends up working out, I might wanna keep this one that's on the R5 right now just because it's not crazy heavy, but it still feels like quality. I wanna see how bulbous it makes me look. You can compare right there to see what my face looks like there and see, God, this is like maybe four inches away from my face right now. It's making me look quite bulbous. Look at that. You can get real close. That's, this is crazy. Look how close that is to my face right now, getting that, that freshly popped pimple off my, uh, the bridge of my nose. Wow, you can get right up in the eye there. That is wild. I can't hear it. It's very quiet. I can hear it. I can hear the motors turning. Maybe you guys will pick it up on this uh, Movo microphone. Let me just go quiet and go back and forth with it so you can see if this microphone on top of the camera can pick up the, the uh, audio of the focus turning. Yeah, this is a dope vlogging lens as far as I can tell. I like the look, I like the feel. It's nice and small for being this wide angle thing because a lot of times you see wide angle lenses and they seem so big and heavy. It's pretty travel friendly. That is a 20 millimeter f1.8. So why am I not just going with that lens right there if I have the 18 mil right here? This camera has something called active stabilization, which I really like, but what happens with that is it punches in a little bit and you lose some of your width. I'm trying to get every freaking millimeter I can. And when you're on the wider end of things, every single millimeter counts. So 18 millimeter and 20 millimeter are very, very different lenses than say a 50 millimeter and a 55 millimeter. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's open this thing up and test it out and see how it is. Oh, that's a nice little hard case. Check this out. Canon, will you focus on that before you die on me? The camera's about to die. I forgot to change out the battery like a doofus. Wow, that's a tiny lens. That's so small. Look at that. That is so lightweight, Jesus. Oh, the camera's focusing on my face instead of the product. Look, look how tiny this is. Jeez Louise, can you focus on this please, Canon? There you go, you got it. It's so tiny and it comes with a nice little hard case. Can you focus on that? Oh yeah, you're doing it, Canon. This is tiny. This is comparable to the 35 millimeter 1.8 that Sony sells. So let's give this doohickey a shot. That is a tiny lens. It feels really, really lightweight to the point that I'm like, ooh, is this gonna last? It feels somewhat cheap, especially compared to that 14 millimeter that's on the Canon right there. Rolling. This is the 18 millimeter Samyang F2.8 autofocus. It's got face priority, it's tracking my eye. It seems to be doing a pretty good job. How close can we get? That's about as close as we can get right there. I'm about, look how, look how far I am, you guys. Is it making me look eggheaded? Oh, I got crap in my eye. You should check your face. This is why we need more people on set. I got this really close, look how close this is to me. Cha-cha, you gotta see this. 
This is crazy. Look how tight this is. This is tracking me like a beast. Look at that. Above, below, it, it's not letting go of my face, yo. How about we turn away and, and come back? And boom, right on me. Boom, right on me. Wow. It's got me. This is crazy. This is nice and light too. I think this is my winner right here. Even though the lens feels kind of cheap. I mean, it does feel cheap. And in, in all fairness, it was cheap. It was like 300 bucks. The other one, the 14 mil right there, $700, I believe. For 300 bucks, this is actually a pretty decent vlogging lens. This feels really light. I, this, I don't feel any pain in, in carrying this. I think this is the winner right here, man. 18 millimeter. It's pretty good. Oh God, this is, I like this. I'm falling in love with it. So you guys, you, you can judge for yourself if you like the quality of the video coming out. So let's see if we can hear the autofocus at work. I can faintly hear the autofocus doing its thing. Just a little bit. It's not bad. It's actually much quieter than the 14 mil, which which died because the Canon R5 died. I can barely hear it, which is great. And if you're using a lav, you definitely won't be able to hear it. Any mic source that's not directly on the camera, it's not gonna pick it up. Wide angle enough, light enough that I can just do this for a while and it won't hurt. This is great, man. I'm, I'm liking this. I'm, I'm really liking this. Um, Y'all don't know what I was working with before. I was using this camera with the 16 to 35 2.8 and holding it by the lens and my, sh my shoulder was just like dying. This is beautiful. I like this a lot. I'm a strong recommendation for this lens right here as far as I can tell. So y'all do what you want, but this is, I'm gonna try rocking this belly right here for a little bit. And it comes with a hard case too. I mean, this is much nicer than the one that came with the 14 mil. This is what came with the 14 mil, this little, this is just not very substantial. Maybe it has to do with the Samyang branding. And if, if I got the Samyang version of that 14 mil, maybe it would come with this, who knows? Oh, I forgot to do a uh, 20 mil test so you guys can see the difference. It feels substantially different. Yeah, there's just a little bit more weight here. I can already feel my shoulder. There's a there's a difference there. I mean, it doesn't look like there's a difference, but there's a difference between this lens and this lens. This feels like a toy by comparison, as it should, because this thing is $300. This lens right here is about $800, $900, $850 if you get it on sale. Uh, obviously, this might look nicer. You get better depth of field, and you can still get close with this 20 mil. This is a beautiful lens, and I strongly recommend it if you're in the neighborhood for something more premium. But if you're trying to save money and you want a vlogging lens, this Samyang one this is dope it's so light I can't believe how light it is and I'm already feeling the strain you know what I'm talking about if you ever tried vlogging you feel that strain after a while that's what it feels like right now I feel it in my chest my arm and shoulder after a minute if you got some muscles on you, you this will probably be fine the 20 mil like you can get it further enough back longer than 20 mil on a full frame sensor is too much at least for my needs I think that this is perfect right here in terms of like the distance if I'm using 20 mil but it's heavier now you can see the difference between the two lenses it also comes with a now okay this thing's Cheap as hell. It, it looks like it can break real easily. I can't take the one off the off the 14 millimeter because it's attached permanently, but this looks substantially better than this bullshit right here. Now, for $300, fine, I'll take it. Okay, so I just installed this Heda ND filter in the back of this Rokinone lens. Pretty cool. It allows me to open up to 2.8 and still look not blown out. Also, I had to buy two disc stations, one for this 14 millimeter Rokinone and one for the 18 millimeter Samyang in order to update the lens because you can't do it through the body. And that allows you to use the lens at its maximum potential with the camera body that you bought it for. So in this particular instance, I couldn't use image stabilization at all until I updated the lens. I updated it, now I can use enhanced stabilization while recording in 8K resolution. Don't ever do it, it's stupid, it's overkill. But I'm doing it now so you guys can see what it looks like when you shoot with this lens at its maximum maximum potential at enhanced stabilization. Let me walk around. I'm not gonna walk around too much because it's 8K and it costs me a lot. So this is what it looks like. 8K, walking around, uh, enhanced stabilization. Anyway, installing this filter wasn't the easiest thing to do. However, once it's done, it's done and it's easy to swap the filters in and out using the little suction cup. And it allows you to have ND filters for your 14 millimeter Rokinone, which is a feature of this lens. That's it for now, you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully y'all enjoyed that. Y'all be good. Peace out.